Mario has been in a lot of games. I don't think Nintendo has a solid timeline that links them all together, so I made my own. It wasn't easy, so do me a favor and subscribe to the leaderboard, okay? Other YouTubers like Connor the Waffle and MatPat have attempted the monstrous task of stringing a Super Mario timeline together, and kudos to them, but I've yet to see one with every single Mario title. So time for me, Marcus, to give it a shot. The rules are simple. If Mario is in the game's title or is a central playable character, it must be included. Sorry, Quicks. Cutscenes alone don't count. I won't don't try too hard to shoehorn in the Paper Mario games. You know, they take place in a separate Paper Universe, and Paper Mario is a different character. But Jumpman and Mario are the same person according to Nintendo. Okay? Okay. Let's give this a shot. The Yoshi's Island series. When Mario's a baby, a stork is carrying him and Luigi along on a delivery route. Suddenly, Kamek comes and knocks poor Mario out of the sky, sending him plummeting down to the island below. Luckily, it's Yoshi's Island, so eight adorable Yoshis help deliver him back home. You can see the whole adventure in Super Mario World 2, Yoshi's Island, and its retelling, Yoshi's Touch and Go. After an epic final boss battle with a giant baby Bowser, Mario and his brother make it home safe and sound. But wait, it's the wrong household. Oh come on, that stork had one job. So then, we have Yoshi's New Island basically a rinse and repeat, where Kamek's kidnapping plans are thwarted once more. Kamek expands his horizons and attempts to kidnap baby Mario, along with Luigi, Wario, DK, and Peach, in Yoshi's Island DS, but the Yoshi Guardians prevail yet again. Now that Mario and Luigi have seen a fair bit of action, they're able to fend for themselves and team up with their adult counterparts from the future in Mario and Luigi Partners in Crime. Hey, five titles down already! Only about a hundred to go. Military Service and Carpentry We don't know a lot about Mario's childhood and teenage years. Come on, make Super Mario pimple popper happen, Miyamoto. But in young adulthood, Mario joins the military in Mario's Bombs Away, blowing things up in jungle operations. After he returns to civilian life, Mario can't shake the itch to blow things up or change as a man. So, he satisfies his appetite for destruction in Wrecking Crew alongside younger brother Luigi. As Mario matures, he decides to expand his resume beyond Make Things Go Boom and actually builds in Mario's Cement Factory. Now that he's making that sweet, sweet union money, the Italian charmer attracts the ire of the beautiful Pauline, who soon becomes his girlfriend. That's where Pinball falls in, because Pauline is there and Mario bounces the ball with a construction girder. He then parlays this ball bouncing skill into another industrial gig with Alleyway. Unfortunately, Pauline's beauty brings other suitors, namely Mario's pet Donkey Kong, a large ape that he unfortunately mistreats. DK kidnaps Pauline and Mario must track her down through various construction sites and a pie factory within Donkey Kong. He has to navigate many more locations in its expanded remake slash sequel, Donkey Kong 94. Mario succeeds, and although she appreciates Mario's heroics, Pauline doesn't owe the sweaty carpenter anything. Staying with Mario makes her a target for future kidnappings, so she dumps him a few weeks later, leaving Mario to spiral into a deep depression. First, Mario lashes out further at DK, trapping him in a cage. DK Jr. comes to his rescue, kicking Mario's ass and humbling the carpenter even further in Donkey Kong Jr., also retold as Donkey Kong 2 Game & Watch. Mario realizes that everything about carpentry reminds him of his old muse, Pauline, so he decides to change career paths. Like many young 20-somethings, he becomes an artist, trying his hand at drawing, music, and animation through Mario Paint. He's only ever good at coloring, though, as seen in Super Mario Bros. and Friends, When I Grow Up. Eventually, Mario realizes that all his art projects were just lopsided collaborations with, well, the player. He didn't really do anything, and figures he's got no artistic talent in the first place. Desperate, Mario then attempts street performance with Mario the Juggler, another Game & Watch title I just learned about, collecting nickels and pennies on the boardwalk. In time, Mario grows sick of the starving artist's life and returns to his blue-collar roots. Plumbing Days Mario teams back up with little brother Luigi in a new exciting trade, plumbing. They start a lucrative business going through sewage systems, flushing out various sidesteppers, shell creepers, fighter flies, and freezies under the streets of New York in Mario Brothers. Finally, Mario starts making the big bucks, collecting solid gold coins underground that are as big as his head. Mario continues cleaning out the pipes in Mario Clash, where he encounters enemies that seem out of this world, like Paragoombas and Pokies. It isn't long before the brothers stumble onto a portal to the Mushroom Kingdom, a magic world with delightful mushroom people ruled by Princess Toadstool. Unfortunately, they arrive right when she gets kidnapped by the nefarious King Koopa, aka Bowser. Reminded of his lost love Pauline, Mario channels his military days and goes full Rambo on the Mushroom Kingdom to save this princess. During the events of Super Mario Bros., he destroys countless Goombas, Koopa Troopas, and Bricks on his way through eight worlds towards the princess. I include Bricks because, it turns out, Bowser turned many of the poor mushroom people into these blocks that layer the kingdom. After a lot of collateral damage, Mario, and you know, Luigi I guess, save Princess Toadstool. Mario really enjoys this princess saving trade, so he retires his plunger and stays in the Mushroom Kingdom as its guardian. The peace doesn't last long though, Bowser is stubborn and persistent, so he kidnaps Princess Toadstool again 
in Super Mario Bros. 2, aka Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels. Things are a lot harder this time, but it's no matter for our man Mario. Mario and Princess Toad still like each other, but both try playing it cool. Mario wants to take this romance slow. He's had some baggage since Pauline left him. A few months later, for Super Mario 64, Princess Toadstool breaks first, inviting Mario over for cake. Huh? She even signs the letter with her nickname, Peach. Way to gain hand in the situation, Mario. Unfortunately, Mario just can't catch a break. Bowser hijacks the castle, traps Peach inside, and hides power stars needed to get to her throughout 15 worlds dispersed through paintings. So Mario does what he does best. He gathers up all the stars and says so long to Bowser, thwarting his plan. Once she's safe, Peach rewards him with a kiss. Finally, breaking that romantic tension. Over the moon with joy, Mario heads to the roof of the castle where his childhood savior Yoshi is chilling out. This reunion inspires Mario to take a little vacation to Yoshi's home, Dinosaur Land. Lands beyond the Mushroom Kingdom. Mario, Peach, and Third Wheel Luigi are chilling on a beach in Dinosaur Land. When the brothers turn their back for like, I don't know, two seconds, flip, Peach gets kidnapped again. They find a hatching Yoshi egg, and this fresh new Yoshi joins up with the brothers to save his dinosaur brethren and the princess in Super Mario World, or Super Mario Bros. 4 on the Nelsonic Game Watch. The brothers traverse diverse lands within the world, including Donut Plains, Forest of Illusion, Chocolate Island, Valley of Bowser, and more. Once they reach Bowser, they rescue the flailing princess, ending what's surely the worst vacation ever, until sunshine at least. Totally defeated, Bowser gives up the chase to kidnap the princess. Nah, just kidding. Shortly after, he scoops her up again in his Koopa Clown car and holds her hostage for the beginning of Super Mario RPG Legend of the Seven Stars. Rushing to her rescue, Mario arrives in time for Exor, a huge sword, to come crashing through Star Road in Bowser's castle, sending the princess, Mario, and Bowser careening in separate directions. This is all so Smithy and his gang can take over the lucrative Mushroom Kingdom. With the Star Road gone, wishes can no longer be granted, and Mario stands no chance against the Smithy gang. He must travel throughout seven major worlds, including the Mole Mountains, Seaside, Nimbus Land, and more, to collect seven star pieces to Store Star Road. Along the way, Mario gets help from a cloud, oh, sorry, frog named Mallow, and Star Road Warrior slash doll slash future Super Smash Brothers character, please, Gino. Even Bowser joins in on the fight. The enemy of my enemy is my friend, after all. Later on, Princess Peach joins the roster and proves, hey, suddenly she can fend for herself. Mario starts to doubt just how helpless she is. Anyway, the heroes prevail, defeating Smithy in his factory, restoring the Star Road, and saving the day. If you really, really want to force the Paper Mario series in, I guess you can throw them in release order here if you want. Technically, Paper Mario was developed as a sequel to this RPG, after all. There. Happy? After this exhausting RPG adventure, Mario needs a deep rest. Ever have crazy dreams after a stressful day? Well, that's exactly what happens, as Mario finds himself joined by Luigi, Toad, and the now battle-hardened Princess Peach in the world of Subcon. Subcon, subconscious, so clever. This is the world of Super Mario Bros. 2, but the American Super Mario Bros. 2. Subcon also has seven diverse worlds, including deserts, sky, and ice. The gang has to battle enemies like Shy Guys and Birdos, and a bunch of new bosses, like the bomb-spewing Mauser and the big bad Wart, whose weakness is vegetables. After stopping Wart, Mario wakes up. So wait, was this all a dream? Uh, let's just say yes, we've already spent way too much time on this one. From there, Peach tasks Mario with saving her pals King Fret and Prince Pine in Jewelry Land. Since his adventures are starting to get stale, he insists on riding his friend Yoshi the whole entire time and using the super scope so he doesn't get his hands dirty in Yoshi's Safari. Beginnings of a Mogul So, remember how Mario began collecting coins back in Mario Brothers? Well, he never quite stopped, and now he's sitting on a fortune. Gold may be common in the Mushroom Kingdom, but it's still pretty valuable back here in our reality. Now that he's a multi-millionaire, Mario decides to pursue his artistic passions once again. And what better way to blow millions than by funding a Broadway play? As many people now know, Super Mario Brothers 3 is pretty much fully confirmed as a stage play. It's a dramatic retelling of Mario's Mushroom Kingdom adventures, complete with hanging set pieces, bolted platforms, and a red curtain. It's quite a successful show. Think the staging ambition of The Lion King meets the popularity of Hamilton. So now, Mario is not only filthy rich, he's more famous than Lin-Manuel Miranda. Mario becomes a household name, and this fame allows him to be a celebrity referee in games like Tennis and Punch-Out. But it wasn't just PR. He took those roles seriously. He even refereed the heavyweight world championship match between Little Mac and Mike Tyson. I know I don't really need to include these cameos as per my rules, but 
I mean, come on, it's, it's punch out. But with fame comes a price. With increased notoriety, tabloids begin digging into Mario's past for any skeletons in his closet. And what do they find? A hefty dose of animal abuse. It was a dark time for him, but Mario did lock up Donkey Kong in a cage. The statute of limitations hasn't yet been reached, so Mario finds himself convicted by a jury and sitting in front of a judge. Community service days. As punishment, Mario is sentenced to community service, helping educate the world's youth. First, he develops a learning curriculum trifecta for tykes with Mario early years. Fun with letters, fun with numbers, and preschool fun. For the slightly older audience learning about computing or entering the workforce, he embarks on QWERTY adventures, Mario teaches typing 1 and 2. Then, to create hype for learning about geography and history, he creates two more interactive stage plays in Mario is Missing and Mario's Time Machine, respectively. With his service complete and his probation expired, Mario decides to treat him and Peach to another vacation, this time to Isle Delfino. Unfortunately, when he arrives, a mysterious Shadow Mario has made a mess across the whole island. Coupled with his past convictions, Mario is immediately framed as a vandal and finds himself on trial once more. He must clean up the island all while bringing sunshine to Isle Delfino via 120 shine sprites in Super Mario Sunshine. At least he doesn't have to give everything a spit shine. He's got the EGAD developed Flood to make cleaning and platforming a breeze. Turns out Bowser Jr. is actually Shadow Mario. Mario. When he makes his debut, he kidnaps the princess, thinking Peach is his own mother. From there, it's rinse and repeat as Mario fights his way to Corona Mountain and takes down Junior and his father once again. Upon returning to the Mushroom Kingdom, Bowser decides to recruit the help of his now battle-hardened son once more in kidnapping the princess via new Super Mario Brothers. Despite it being Bring Your Child to Work Day, Mario of course rescues the princess once more, and Bowser retreats to reevaluate his plans. But there's a brand new threat for the now experienced team of Mario, Luigi, Peach, and Yoshi to take on. One of Mario's fans creates the Super Merge Visor, which a bunch of rabbits steal after messing around with their time washing machine. They open a portal to the Mushroom Kingdom, sucking up our Mario friends and launching a desperate tactical struggle for control of the Fungi Land in Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle, complete with the threat of growing interdimensional time space portals. Team Mario prevails, taking out Bowser Jr., Spawny, Bowser, and the Mega Bug, eventually restoring the continuum with help from robot Beepo and its future self, FB. Midlife Crisis with another few heroic adventures under his belt, and with thousands of more giant gold coins in his wallet, Mario decides it's time to play. A lot. He invests millions into traveling the world with his entourage, now including the likes of Daisy, Wario, and more, playing every sport imaginable. Every countless iteration of Mario Golf, soccer with the Mario Strikers games, every Mario Tennis, racing adventures with every Mario Kart, over-budget competitive lavish parties with the Mario Party series, Mario Super Sluggers and other baseball titles, Mario Hoops 3 on 3 and NBA Streets V3, Mario Sports Mix, Mario Sports Superstars, you get the idea. We're talking about dozens of titles. Hell, he even fit in a few Olympics with Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Game Series. But eventually, this endless play begins to bore our hero. He's just doing the same thing again and again and again. How can he add a little excitement to make himself feel alive? Simple. Fight Club, aka Super Smash Bros. and Super Smash Bros. Melee. This becomes more and more popular, as seen with the increasing roster, and the brawlers take on a collective threat in Subspace Emissary, the adventure mode of Super Smash Bros. Brawl. Super Smash Bros. 4 is more harmless fighting fun, but the gang all comes together again in World of Light during Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. After all this excitement, Mario decides to take up a more relaxed hobby with baking in Yoshi's Cookie. Back to Adventures. With Mario's hand in so many cookie jars, constantly fighting or playing sports, Peach begins to feel a little neglected. As Mario and Luigi ditch her to go on a coin hunting adventure, Peach contacts Bowser's Koopalings to stage a kidnapping for little more attention. This sets off New Super Mario Bros. 2, which backfires for Peach. With coins everywhere, Mario's immense wealth only grows. He uses the spare billion to invest and grow an even bigger empire, turning the cutthroat world of real estate into a competitive game against his buddies in Fortune Street. Still determined, Peach then tries to pull the whole cake slash kidnapping ruse again with Super Mario Run. By this point, Mario has gotten so used to saving her, he can do it with one hand. She then allows herself to be kidnapped by Goombas via air cannon at a fair. Really? Goombas? Come on, Peach, no one's gonna believe that. Anyway, Mario has to chase after her using the Spheralizer, setting off the events of Mario Pinball Land. Reverting back to a cake caper, we get it, Peach likes cakes, we have new Super Mario Bros. Wii, where a giant cake stuffed with Koopalings arrives in time for Peach's birthday. Little does Mario know, the dastardly damsel ordered the darn cake herself.
herself. She gets kidnapped again, and Mario, Luigi, and Blue and Yellow Toads embark on a co-op adventure of epic proportions. After succeeding, Peach recruits Bowser and the Koopalings once more, now with a giant mechanical arm, for one more 2D attention-seeking attempt in New Super Mario Bros. U. Mario, Luigi, and the Toads humor her once more, but unfortunately for the princess, this brotherly co-op bonding only further widens the rift between Peach and Mario. Brotherly Rekindling See, all of these rescue missions have made Mario and Luigi's brotherly bonding stronger than ever. Since they work so well together, the brothers vow to spend even more time with one another. First, they head out to the Bean Bean Kingdom alongside Bowser under the guise of retrieving Peach's voice from Cacletta in Mario and Luigi's Superstar Saga. They then journey through time to fend off the Shroobs, meeting up with their baby selves and the beginning of our timeline with Partners in Time. Soon after, they venture into Bowser himself, a la Magic School Bus, Bowser's Inside Story. Luigi then gets the subcon treatment when he and Mario visit his dreams in Dream Team, battling Antasma and Dreamy Bowser with use of the Dreamstone. Finally, they unleash the entirety of the Paper World into the Mushroom Kingdom and must bring these 2D beings back into their magic storybook in Paper Jam. As jealous as ever, Peach goes out of her way to invite the brothers over for a picnic. Luigi hopes she made lots of spaghetti. While they're busy, she lets Bowser take over the kingdom, set up seven Koopa hotels, and eventually hide the princess in one. And so, the stage is set for Hotel Mario. Mario and Luigi find Peach in the largest, most conspicuous hotel, and she rewards both with a kiss, just to make Mario jealous. Out of this world kidnappings. When her most elaborate plan yet doesn't work, Peach goes full Beastie Boys, intergalactic planetary. During the Star Festival at the Mushroom Kingdom at the start of Super Mario Galaxy, she puts herself in a vulnerable position to be abducted again by Bowser, like alien abducted, because he takes her to space. After Kamek launches Mario into the void, he finds himself at Rosalina's observatory. To save Peach, he must gather 120 power stars and a countless star bits with the help of Lumas to restore power to the observatory. Once the starship is up and running, Mario travels to the center of the universe to take on Bowser once more. There, a giant black hole forms, gobbling up the universe, eventually collapsing into singularity, creating a supernova. Remember when Mario was just a plumber? Fortunately, Rosalina recreates the universe, allowing Mario to basically relive the whole adventure again, this time with Starship Mario plus Yoshi in Super Mario Galaxy 2. Once she's grounded back home, Peach lures Bowser back with the ripe tail tree, offering flight abilities for all his minions. Bowser sucks it dry and kidnaps Peach in the process, setting off the events of Super Mario 3D Land. Here, there are similar obstacles and level scenarios to those found throughout the galaxy in the previous adventure, but Mario can use the Super Leaves too, so he swiftly kicks more Bowser butt. Peach realizes that her constant kidnappings aren't the best way to win over Mario. Sure enough, she figures that her best chance to spend time with the man is to join him on his adventures, just like she did back in Super Mario RPG. She joins Mario, Luigi, and Toad as they save the Sprixie princesses from Bowser in Super Mario 3D World, all while the entire cast discover their love of cats. Bowser takes a brief hiatus from kidnapping to finally cure his tone deafness, stealing the four music keys from Truffle Tower with the help of Waluigi, ridding the land of its musical powers. Mario defeats him in a dance-off at the end of DDR, Mario Mix, but he feels bad about Bowser's lack of musicality. Mario knows the plight of a struggling artist, more than anyone else in the Mushroom Kingdom. So, he turns Bowser's castle into a lush green environment with the mystical keys, igniting the music in everyone's souls and inspiring them to dance. But despite the song in his heart, Bowser is still miffed at the runaround that Peach gave him. She's been stringing him along, using him just to get Mario's attention. Bowser's had enough, so he finally forces her into marriage with the help of the Brutals in Super Mario Odyssey. He also kidnaps a Bonitor named Tiara. They're hat beings with the ability to capture most things. Mario teams up with Tiara's brother, Cappy, to save her and Peach. The hat slash plumber duo travel throughout many new lands, such as the Cascade and Metro Kingdoms, collecting power moons to fuel their ship before for tracking down Bowser on the moon. After King Koopa's final defeat, Mario is suddenly again enamored by Peach at last probably because he sees his ex Pauline is doing quite well without him. He makes a proposal of sorts, pathetically competing with Bowser for her affections, but Peach sees how ridiculous this whole thing is. Fed up, Peach finally sees that she's fine on her own, and decides to tour the kingdoms with Tiara, leaving Mario to ponder what he really wants in life. Farewell, Mushroom Kingdom. Well, it sure as hell isn't wishy-washy Peach, so he decides to save another damsel in distress he knows from his leisure days, Daisy. He abandons the Mushroom Kingdom in favor of Sarasa Land in Super Mario Land, taking on the alien Tatanga. It's a short, fun romp, but it gave his old greedy buddy Wario enough time to take over Mario Land. Yeah, yeah, Mario was rich enough to found his old nation. I probably should have mentioned that earlier. Mario has to find the six golden coins that act as keys to his own castle spread through different zones like Tree Zone, Macro Zone, and Mario Zone. 
hubris much, before reclaiming his throne from Wario in Super Mario Land 2. Wow, ah, don't worry, Wario goes on to star in Wario Land, Super Mario Land 3. Sitting upon his throne, Mario knows that he's still unfulfilled. He uses his unlimited resources to create Mushroom Kingdom levels to remind him of his glory days with Super Mario Maker 1 and 2. He even uses his successful Toy Lion brand to ruffle up his past rivalry with DK for kicks in the Mario vs. Donkey Kong series. Or maybe it's Donkey Kong's grandson, it's this whole family tree thing, we made a video about it. Anyway, playing puzzlers with his pal Yoshi, like in Yoshi, is another fun way to pass the time. But surely, there's more to life. Why not go back to school? He channels his inner Dr. Alan Grant and becomes an archaeologist, as chronicled in Mario's Picross. Still not ambitious enough, Mario then embarks on a journey to get his medical degree. You know that he can afford it. He spends the rest of his working days battling viruses in the Dr. Mario series. Mario eventually retires, allowing him to spend his twilight days playing checkers and backgammon in Mario's game gallery. And here's the best part. Aside from the baby stuff, Mario did all of this when he was around 24 or 25 years old. Let that sink in. And hey, if this timeline doesn't sink in, then let me know how you would string Mario's story together. Two headcanons are better than one. Oh, and be sure to subscribe to the leaderboard while you're at it. After all, all players are welcome. I've been Marcus. Thanks for watching.